Okay, so 52Pi have sent me a new case to test. This is the DeskPi Lite for the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, I've got my Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig. Because uh, I've got a lot of Pi 4s, uh, if I need to know which one is which, if you plug it in without any boot media, it will tell you exactly which model it is on the screen. So let's have a look at it. Uh, I'll just spin this around to show you some of the key specs. So it still has access to the GPIO pins, two full-size HDMI ports, uh, two front USB 2s, which I'll uh, visit in a minute, plastic case for good Wi-Fi and Bluetooth signal, and built-in cooler with PWM fan. So this is how it comes in the box, uh, instruction book, and all the bits are inside here, so I need to unscrew this to get inside it. It does look cool as a case, though. Okay, so with all eight screws taken out, this just pulls apart. There we go. Oh, we can see that we get our first look at the breakout board. Here's the double-sided stickers that go between uh, the CPU, GPU, and various other bits, it looks like, unless there's a spare set in there. So this is the fan, and it appears to be a modified version of this one that I did a test on a while back, which was also from 52Pi. You can see this one has got GPIO pins on it. So rather than have a separate cable to connect the fan uh, to the Pi and, uh, and also the controls, it's all done through the GPIO pins. So let's stick some of these pads on. So you can see we're all four go in the book there. And I do have uh, two pads spare. I've got one of these and the square one as well spare. Take the clear covers off. Okay, they're all on. And what I like about these thermal pads is that they come off really easily as well. Um, so it's not like the where you stick on the heat sinks and they're really hard to get off. These just come off super easy. You can just peel them off straight away. So very easy to fit. I'm just putting the GPO pin straight on top and there's a couple of screws that go up into the aluminium case. So the breakout board is just going to slot together. Uh, it's pretty obvious where it goes. Just got to make sure it's all lined up nicely. And there it is all together. So you can see all the screw holes in the top there. Yeah, that slots in nicely. And pop the base on. So I put most of the screws in, but I've just realized that this little tiny Perspex bit uh, is probably for the indicator light, which I'm guessing is probably here. So I'll take it apart again and pop that in place. So let's see if we can slot this in here. Oh yeah, that's slotted in. You can see from the back side there. Okay, so it's all together. So you can see we've got venting in the top here. Uh, we've got the nice DeskPi logo. Uh, on the back, we've got USB-C, two full-size HDMIs, an analog jack, uh, two USB 2, two USB 3, plus the Ethernet connection. But then we've also got another two USB 2 on the front here. Uh, so we've got extra connectivity with this case. We've got the SD card slot on the bottom there, and let's just see what happens if I try and put a card in. So yeah, the card slots in nicely, and yeah, I can get my nail in there so that comes out nicely as well. USB sockets on the front seem nice and accessible. I just plugged a USB sound card in there. A little bit of venting on the underside here as well. And the GPIO pins, which are all labelled, so you can see it says DeskPi, uh, and they've actually labelled the different power sockets and what they are. And if we open that up, you can see the GPIO pins are in there as well. Yeah, very nice. Let's get this plugged in. So I generally use one of these, uh, which is a HDMI female to micro HDMI, but in the case of this, I can plug in the full size socket. I guess it's probably the one nearer the USB-C. That's usually the main one. Plug that in as well. Now I've got um, RetroPie on here. So I've got Supreme Ultra version 1.1 RetroPie. Just the base version. I haven't got any ROMs or anything I've added because I want to have a look at that in a minute. So let's switch it on and see what happens. I might want to plug in a controller and switch that on. Oh yeah, the lights look cool. So they're much easier to see like that than if I hadn't put in that little Perspex bit. Okay, so it's all started up, but it hasn't detected my gamepad. You can see it's flashing, and if I click on here, it's flashing as well. So the USB 2 sockets on the front don't seem to be working. I took it out of the case just to check that I'd connected everything and there wasn't any extra cables or anything. There isn't anything extra I need. You can see the fan is working. Without any extra software, the fan will just stay on. It's reassuringly nice and quiet. It's, uh, I, I don't know if it's running on 3.3 volt or 5 volt, because obviously you can't switch the cables to, to change the voltage, but it is lovely and quiet. Uh, I'm, I'm not really that conscious of it at all. I did find on the official website, despi.com, uh, enable the front USB 2 port, so I've got to add something to config.txt, and also if I want to enable fan control, 
uh, then I can also add something as well. Now I've just noticed as well, uh, it says enable always on mode. Uh, toggle switches on port adapter board from D to E. And if we go really close to the board, you'll be able to see that uh, we've got a little switch on the front for D to E. Now I don't know if that's to do with the power switch or if that's to do with the USBs, but I'm gonna leave it for now. I'm sure 52Pi will answer it in the comments or someone else will. Now let's try and quit out of this uh, into Raspberry Pi config. I'm gonna need a keyboard, so I'm gonna plug that into one of the uh, USB sockets on the Pi, so I know that's gonna work. Uh, I think if I do Alt F4, yeah, that quits out to this. So we need to type in sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash config dot text. It's slightly different in Ubuntu and some other different operating systems, but this will work the same for Twister OS or Raspberry Pi OS. And you can see, uh, well, this is there's loads of stuff in here because the uh, Supreme Ultra version of RetroPie, they do all sorts of extras to it. Is there any overclocking in here? Yeah, it doesn't look like there is. So I might, I might just overclock anyway. So ARM frequency equals 2147. It's pretty much my standard. And over underscore voltage equals eight, which usually works well on my Pi 4 eight gig. So I'm just adding this line in, DT overlay equals DWC2 comma DR underscore mode equals host. So that's turning on the USB 2 sockets on the front, which are enabled from the USB-C socket on the Pi. Now remember, you don't need to do any of this if you just want to use your Pi in the case. This is if you want to use the front USB sockets. Uh, and also the fan script uh, is if you want it to be able to turn on and off the fan with the temperature of the Pi. Because I'm running with a higher overclock, I'm just going to leave the fan on all the time. But it's the same principle. So Control X to save that. And yes. And enter. So now if I reboot. So after the reboot, you can see this is flashing, but if I press the button on here, uh, it detects it and it's connected. So that will now be working with this. So if I, let's move this up so you can see the screen, press and hold a button on the controller, you can see now I can do D-pad up, down, left, right, start, select, up, down, left, right, and hotkey enable I use as the Xbox button in the middle, so I can press uh, select start and the hotkey at the same time to exit out of pretty much every game. Uh, so now B to OK. And here we are in Supreme Ultra RetroPie version 1.1. Uh, I haven't played with this at all yet. As I say, I haven't had any, any ROMs at all. And I've just switched the audio to the 3.5mm jack um, because it means if I'm screen capturing a game, it means I can turn the game audio down rather than my capture device mixing the whole lot together. Uh, so let's see what's happening with my speaker. Battery 80%. Okay, so let's try something. Uh, what have we got? So wine is something that I've never tried in Supreme Ultra before. Let's give that a go. So games. Mugen is the only one in there at the moment. So this is something I've never tried on the Pi. It came up with a mouse pointer then. Oh, it looks like the controller. Oh, I'm just pressing the uh, D-pad and it's it's selecting the next option. Uh, so which one am I? I'm the one on the left. This is cool. Nice and smooth. Oh, and run is double tap. I mean, it's pretty much street fight controls. Although, weirdly, um, the way it's configured, the digital stick is all your punches and kicks, like that. Uh, and then you move around with the left analog stick. So maybe I'd need to reconfigure that. But uh, yeah, it's working really nicely. Why do I battle? <laughs> Oh, hold on. That's not good. KO. Very good. So if I press select start and the Xbox button, see if that quits out of that. It looks like it's going to... Yeah, that takes us back. So if we go back with the A button to the main menu. And uh, I think I'm going to put this in its case now because I've got it out of its case because I was messing about with it. Uh, but now it's time to put it back in its case. So it's all back in its case, and I really do like this case. It is really nicely designed. Everything's very accessible, even the SD card slot, which is sometimes not accessible. Uh, I don't mind that it's USB 2s on the front because we still have the two USB 3 on the back. And I often use USB 2 uh, when devices don't need loads of power. So in the case of my controller, I would definitely use USB 2 on that uh, because it doesn't need a lot of power and it's perfectly fast enough. Um, but also in the case of my hard drive, so 
This is a 750 gig Toshiba hard drive that I've got. Uh, well, it was actually a Damaso build of RetroPie. I've done some separate videos on this, but uh, I think the download corrupted. It took ages to download and I couldn't get it to boot. So in the end, I just transferred all the ROMs over. And uh, so all the ROMs over on that will now run with this Supreme RetroPie, fingers crossed. Uh, we'll see if it works because obviously it is doing it in a slightly different way. So that's my drive plugged into a USB 2 socket on the front. The operating system, so Supreme Ultra RetroPie version 1.1 is running from the SD card. And let's plug all these other bits back in. So the analog, which is, as we know, is working. I'm not going to worry about mouse and keyboard for this stage because uh, everything I'm going to be using is going to be using the controller. So let's boot that up and see if it recognizes all my ROMs. Okay, so it's found 53 systems. You can see it's loading up all the different bits. And so if we flick down through. Yeah, there is loads and loads of things on there. It's amazing how it detects it all and just works. So let's try N64. Yeah, load of things on here. Bit of center court tennis. I don't know if I've tried that on the N64. Used to play it on the PlayStation 1. Okay, looks decent. Nice and smooth. All the audio is absolutely fine. Fit in the screen well. Okay, it seems to be working all right. Oh, how did I miss that? <laughs> yeah, definitely the speed and the audio and the picture looks great as well. Yeah, really pleased with that. Right, let's quit out of that. So a very impressive case from 52Pi. It's uh, it's definitely one of the most practical ones and uh, it's pretty decent price as well. So I'm running Pop! OS from an M.2 drive at the moment and uh, you can see I've got nothing plugged in the front. Uh, so let's switch into screen capture. So I'll put links to the official DeskPi website in the description. I'll also put Amazon links in there as well. You can see there's a few different bundles are available there. Uh, and also if you're looking at Supreme RetroPie, if you want to download their latest build, there's a link, I got it from the Facebook group, uh, so on the 24th of December they actually shared the build, uh, so the base build without, without loads of ROMs and things in it, but all heavily configured and uh, loads of different emulators and things in there. So this is the official one, and if you scroll down there's various different builds for different models, you can see there's builds for the Pi 2 and Pi 3. I was using the Pi 4 Supreme Ultra version 1.1 in this video. Uh, they have a Patreon as well, so have a look at that if you want to donate. There's various different tiers that you can join. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.